What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten times WWE fans hijacked a match. Man, there are a few times, depending on where the uh, the wrestling show is held at, um, what the event is. Sometimes the crowds get a little rowdy and they just may take over a match. A match. They may not want to see or they think it's boring or they're not invested in or maybe they're hyped about something else. If you guys remember during Extreme Rules, the main event between Seth Rollins and Matt Riddle, pretty much that crowd was just ready for uh, Bray Wyatt to come out there. So they, they kept chanting Bray Wyatt during their match. And this is supposed to be a heated, uh, heated match between Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins in the fight pit, but... I don't think people were as invested more so than them getting hyped to see if Bray Wyatt was going to show up. So we're going to check this out, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. Let's get right into it. One, two, this on. Crowds hijacking shows has become a common occurrence in modern wrestling. Yep. As the fans look to send a message to those in the back that they don't like what they're seeing. That or the fans might be so uninterested in the match, the wrestlers or the yeah. entire show in front of them, that they'd prefer to just entertain themselves. A WWE Championship ship match in the ring. The and fact the fans are doing away. They're doing there are times away, when the crowd bro. is so in favor of a specific wrestler that it can provide a hostile atmosphere for the opponent. You and I were here at ringside WrestleMania 22 in Chicago. John Me? No. Him? Yeah. <laughs> For this list, we've decided to isolate specific matches where it was the crowd that stole the show. Tomahawk chop going here in Atlanta. <laughs> they press go proud. Oh, my God. <laughs> As we look at 10 times, Jesus. Fans, the match. Savio Vega one of them uh, steel chairs. Off, we're going back to one of the earliest instances of fans hijacking a match. And that takes us to the 1995 King of the Ring. This show is considered one of the worst pay-per-views the WWF has ever produced. Topped off by that year's King of the Ring tournament final between Savio Vega and Mabel. The fans were quiet for the early part of the match with the action in the ring giving them nothing to shout about. The long rest hold spots didn't help and eventually the Philadelphia crowd got so bored uh, they started an ECW all, channel. All you had to this say fan was, on commentary even somewhat acknowledges this by telling us... All you had to say is Philly. That's all you had to say. Philly crowd... That lets you know everything. <laughs> so listen in. Listen this. <laughs> Although perhaps he thought the fans were actually getting behind the wrestlers in the ring. Either way, the next time the WWF came to Philadelphia on pay-per-view, wrestlers from ECW were featured in a prominent role. Hey, wait just a moment. There's a local wrestling group here in Philadelphia. Makes sense. To make a name for here. So perhaps these chants inadvertently planted seeds for the ECW invasion that came further down the line. Possibly. Although the fans here weren't as rowdy as they would be in the rest of the hijacks on our list. John Cena vs. Rob Van Dam. Staying with ECW oh, as we look at the iconic one, one night stand, stand 2006 event oh, and its main event for the WWE Championship as Rob Van Dam challenged John Cena. Right from the entrances, it's clear that Cena is- <laughs> They're giving him the middle finger the and everything, just as bro. much anti-Cena <laughs> as they were pro-RVD. Despite being a massive baby face, John it didn't matter. one of the most negative reactions ever witnessed in wrestling. It didn't matter, bro. signature shirt throw into the crowd was proof of this. Instead yep. of the shirt being caught by one lucky fan like normal, it would be launched straight back at Cena multiple <laughs> times with some spitting on the shirt and one fan even wiping his ass with it. Soon yeah, the toilet bro. paper would be thrown at Cena and then the chants would begin. Paper TP at the <laughs> Cena would embrace the it. day. <laughs> the bro, ECW man, one night stand, bro. They let John Cena know that. That's probably, it's definitely up there with one of the crowd reactions. If you know, Money in the Bank, CM Punk versus John Cena. That crowd was just as, if probably more, rowdy. You know, but ECW fans, they let it be known. We don't, we don't rock with you, John. The heel reaction at one point, putting his feet on the rope for leverage, then taunting the crowd and later even punching out the referee. But it all caught up to John with Edge running in and spearing the champion through a table, allowing Van Damme to capitalize with the five star mm -hmm. fox splash. Paul Heyman was there to count the fall as RVD became the new WWE champion, being spurred on by one of the most raucous crowds in yep. wrestling history. Kurt Angle versus Randy Orton. It wasn't just Cena who faced the brunt of the ECW. Yep, one night, night stand, man. As earlier in the card, Randy Orton was <laughs> <a similar laughs> Look at the middle finger. 
encounter with Kurt Angle, who had just pledged his loyalty to the ECW brand. And since Orton, much like Cena, is perhaps the prototypical WWE superstar, this meant the reaction from the New York faithful would be unforgiving, with one young fan even landing a mini punch to the arm of the legend killer during Randy's entrance. And as if Orton couldn't feel any more out of place in ECW, his falling pyro gave the people added ammunition for the chance they were about to unleash. <laughs> Perhaps it was one chant too many for Orton, that or one ankle lock attempt too many, as Angle would finally lock in the submission hold. And with Orton not wanting Kurt to break his ankle again, he had no choice but to tap. This put an end to a good contest that was made even better by the fans' involvement. As the oh. two examples we've covered from One Night Stand 2006, great, great are cases where the fans moment, hijacking man. the show enhanced both matches. John Cena versus Randy Orton. Thus far, we've seen two separate matches where a hostile crowd went against Cena and Orton. So imagine what happened when they wrestled each other in front of another rowdy audience with the Viper defending the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This occurred at the 2014 Royal Rumble and was watched by a Pittsburgh crowd who were oh. fed up with seeing Orton and Cena yeah. wrestle. They made this known before the match even began with the first of numerous chants for Daniel Bryan. Someone the people were much more uh -huh. interested in seeing. What do you see, King? Once things got underway, their usual Let's Go Cena, Cena Sucks chants rang out. Cena Sucks! <laughs> However, the fans would then direct their chants away from the match again. Well, when you make us wish we were dead. Never give up. They're literally the chanting other wrestlers mid-match. <laughs> Although it wasn't because they liked what they were seeing. <laughs> the audience did appear to get more on board with the match following a compelling sequence, which featured a ref bump, belt shot, multiple finishers, and a series of near falls. However, following this, the people were back to their old ways as they made it known how they'd rather be watching the Divas instead. Wow. Then after each man stole each other's finisher, it looked like Cena was about to secure the victory after locking in the STF in the center of the ring. But the Wyatt family's interference allowed Orton to take advantage with one final RKO, which ensured he retained his title. The Pittsburgh audience will have been happy to finally see the match end, but we can't fault the wrestlers who still put in quite the shift in the ring. Only the fans were having none of it, yeah. as seen by how they reacted. They didn't Since care. this was a match they simply did not want to see. Yep. Batista vs Alberto Del Rio. The 2014 Royal Rumble would also mark the return of Batista, much mm -hmm. to the anger of many people who were upset to see the animal win the Rumble match instead of fan favorite yep. Daniel Bryan. The fallout saw Batista being booed out of arenas every week as it was Boo clear that audiences <laughs> did not want to see him in the main event of WrestleMania. This was especially apparent just a month before the show of shows when Batista battled Alberto Del Rio at the Elimination Chamber 2014. The crowd was so against Batista that they even began to cheer Del Rio, something that was a rare sight even when Alberto had previously been a babyface. Del Rio tried to heal it up before the bell by pretending to be injured as a way of gaining the upper hand before the match got started, but this only led to him getting cheered with Del Rio chant. Hey, hey, they're actually cheering for Alberto. Then came a chant that embodied Batista's entire 2014 comeback run. Batista, yep. Big Dave would also be reminded of who the crowd wanted to see at WrestleMania instead of him. Well, you knew that Batista was going to want to compete. The fans continued to ignore the match, this time chanting for wrestlers who either weren't with the company or on television at the time. Yup. Hey, that's, that's, you know it's bad. The fans would then get you know it's bad when they, when, when fans start chanting just random wrestlers, <laughs> you know they don't care for the match. Behind Del Rio, however, a collision with the exposed turnbuckle meant the animal was able to take control, hitting the Batista bomb which earned the win. Del Rio would reveal that during the match, Batista was taken aback by the crowd's reaction, but Alberto knew they just had to go with it as the fans' minds were made up. Seth mm -hmm. Rollins versus Baron Corbin. So as we've seen already, if certain crowds aren't interested in the story, line or either of the wrestlers performing then the people will have no issue hijacking the match yep. and this was what happened at the 2019 stomping grounds pay-per-view where baron corbin challenged seth rollins for the universal championship corbin revealed lacey evans as the special guest referee the fans weren't happy with this or the direction of the story uh -uh. and chanted this is stupid as a result and the wwe universe uh Voicing their displeasure with the choice. They then decided to shift their focus away from the match by chanting for other wrestlers and even a rival promotion. Yeah. <laughs> Got a little bit of influence with 
goes in power. WWE fans here in Tacoma. They just did not care. The wrestlers were, however, able to garner a good reaction after Seth powerbombed Corbin through the announce table. However, given the match was more storyline driven than action focused, it was always going to be a struggle for the wrestlers to keep the crowd since the fans didn't even like the storyline to begin with, mm -hmm. as the match was forced to restart twice to try and get over how much Seth was being screwed over by the heel ref. Lacey Evans. The fans did chant for Becky Lynch though and yeah. popped once she made her run in, which then allowed Rollins to take over as he hit a curb stomp to get the win and retain the Universal Championship. In the end, the wrestlers were put in a tough spot as the match was built up poorly on television in the weeks prior. This then led to a negative response when Lacey Evans was revealed as the guest referee that in turn resulted in the people in the building ignoring the match. Six yeah. women tag. The Raw after WrestleMania is always a highlight of the WWE calendar each year as it's always the most hardcore of hardcore fans mm -hmm. that go to the show. This, this makes for quite true. a party atmosphere as people flock from all over the world to attend. And while the fans will still get behind their favorites, if the action in the ring doesn't interest them, they'll have no they problem will let you know. the match. <laughs> there have been countless examples of this happening over the years and the first one we'll look at went down at the Raw after WrestleMania 31 in 2015 where a six women's tag team match saw AJ Lee, Paige and Naomi take on Natalia and the Bella Twins. The match began with chants of We Want Bailey, who at the time was a member of the NXT roster. Natalia, Natalia trying to do the same to Naomi, and she does. But it would be during the commercial break that the chants became less PG, as the audience mm. would aim chants at the women in the match and their boyfriends. First starting with Nikki Bella and her <laughs> then partner, John Cena. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Attention then turned to the married women in the match and their husbands. <laughs> the chants fizzled out as the show returned from the break. As the fans began oh to get on my with God. the and this seemingly spurred the baby faces on as they managed to get the victory after Nikki shook Brie by accident, which allowed Naomi to hit the rear view, which got the three. In the end, the match didn't come off too badly on television, with the crude chants occurring mostly during the commercial. But these chants are proof of just how crazy the that's after funny, WrestleMania bro. crowd can be. Randy Orton vs. Sheamus. Next, we'll find oh, the match that funny. started it all when it came to the fans really hijacking a match during the Raw after WrestleMania. Randy Orton took on Sheamus, and it's fair to say that neither man would have expected how the crowd was about to react to their match. The chants began straight away with the fans singing Ole. Well, you're right about that. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Absolutely anything can happen in this match. They then started chants for Mikey Oda, Dolph Ziggler, <laughs> and pretty much anyone but the wrestlers in the ring. Mikey Oda. <laughs> it's funny, uh, you're hearing a lot of chants tonight. My lord, this place is insane. The, I, I remember that. I remember that. They started chanting JBL. That shit was mad funny. He couldn't help but laugh because... <laughs> They just started randomly chanting them because they didn't really care what was happening in the ring. I remember this. <laughs> One, but the rest is in the ring. That was funny, man. <laughs> it's funny, uh, you're hearing a lot of chants tonight. My lord, this place is insane. They're Smart chanting. Face, they're brilliant. Now they're chanting for Lawler. They're chanting my name. Oh, They've gone nuts. <laughs> The Big Show then interfered, which put the match to a stop, which the people thanked him for. <laughs> <laughs> then the crowd gave themselves a pat on the back as the segment came to a close. Big Show doing what he can. <laughs> this match was significant as it not only set the tone for the future Raw after WrestleMania shows, but uh -huh. it would also influence how future crowds would behave whenever they didn't care for a match taking place in the ring, with chance for wrestlers not in the match and Mexican waves becoming more common. John Cena and Roman Reigns versus The Miz and Samoa Joe. Our final two entries on the list are examples of how a wrestler can take advantage of the crowd hijacking a match. First, we have a tag team match from Raw in August 2017. Here, John Cena teamed with Roman Reigns to face The Miz and Samoa Joe. Right when the match got underway, Cena would stop to acknowledge the fans playing with a beach ball. Cena then got upset, much like the crowd did once security took away the beach ball. Beach ball looks familiar from <laughs> last night at 
The same thing happened the night prior to SummerSlam uh -huh. where Cesaro jumped the barricade and destroyed the beach ball after it had been confiscated. Both of these made for cool moments that added to each match instead of taking away from them like would have been the case had the wrestlers just ignored what was going on. There was still more to come however when it came to the Raw match. Fans first rained down asshole chants at the security for taking the ball away. <laughs> Samoa Joe, still in a foul. We want beach ball chants then followed. To keep themselves entertained, the crowd then busted out a Mexican wave, much to the frustration of the Miz in the ring. And Roman Reigns earlier that this is. <laughs> <laughs> but it was much to the delight of Cena, who decided to join in with the wave. When in another fun moment, John once again addressed the audience, hijacking the match. When most wrestlers would have simply ignored it and continued working. John Cena thrives under these situations. <laughs> the fans didn't attempt to hijack things any further as the team of Cena and Reigns picked up the win when Cena countered a skull crushing finale into an attitude adjustment. In what was an overall <laughs> fun match, thanks to the wrestler's response to the Brooklyn crowd's antics, John hey, Cena versus Dolph Ziggler. John, John is one of those people that can turn something like that and make it a little bit more entertaining. He's acknowledging it and actually having fun with it. I can respect that. <laughs> As just saw, Cena is a pro when it comes to reacting to fans. He can take something that might normally be a match. I was just saying that. I was just we'll saying that. Promo and turn it so it adds to them. One of the best examples of Cena reacting to a crowd in a match occurred when John defended the United States champion versus Dolph Ziggler in an open challenge on Raw in 2015. Early on, Cena noticed some rumblings from the crowd and immediately looked over to see what was going down. Once he realized what happened, Cena told Ziggler to lay out as John grabbed the mic. A successful marriage proposal occurring in the crowd shows us how anything truly can happen in the WWE. She said yes, we got a married couple here tonight. <laughs> As she said yes chants then echoed throughout the arena. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Cena and Dolph finished out a very good back and forth match, continuing to keep the crowd invested with the finish coming after an out of nowhere AA. Now, while this match wasn't a typical fan hijack like other entries on this mm -hmm. list, it was an example of a specific moment temporarily hijacking a match. But since it was noticed by Cena and then acknowledged on camera, it resulted in a unique moment that was yeah. followed by an awesome match. So that's pretty as we've cool, seen, man. the fans can hijack a match in numerous different ways. It's always interesting to see how the fans react as without them, wrestling can get very boring very quickly if you want to know what 316 day is all about give me a hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> and that brings us to the end of this video as always if you enjoyed the it's just nobody there we just giving a hell yeah from the grill man oh this was a good one bro this was this was a, a another good video um i will say this man john is just really good at being able to capitalize on those you know random on the spur well you know random moments random moments that you don't you know it's not supposed to happen them hijacking the show the crowd hijacking the show and he's kind of playing along with it that's how you kind of keep things fresh and interesting man but comment down below let me know which cities or countries have some of the craziest rowdiest crowds man i know the uk y'all have some fantastic crowds i know philly has some great crowds when it comes to like wrestling cities new york has some great crowds as well let me know down below some of your favorite wrestling cities um and their crowds when the uh these these shows uh come to their cities man let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support man row two honey k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace